We've all got those parts of our house where the internet just won't go. Well, if you had wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity, you could worry less about dead spots. Because with wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity, you get fast speeds, reliable connection in every room, and power for all your devices, even when everyone's online. That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi, only on the Xfinity 10G network. Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. Actual speeds vary. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Ram fans, this is Rams Up, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are proud members of the Fans First Sports Network. That's fansfirstsports.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our channel is at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. You'll hear from my co host, Tom, on occasion as well. Hey, we're not Rams insiders, we're just longtime fans who love. Talking about our Los Angeles Rams. Let's get to it. Welcome back, Ram fans. Episode 412 of Rams Up. And I'm going to kick this off with a trivia question. The answer is a player who wore number 12 for our Los Angeles Rams. Rams signed this quarterback after he was waived and he played for the Rams one year I don't think he even finished the year, actually. This was 1977. It was not a good year, not a good year at all for this quarterback. And he gave way to Pat Hayden. He is, however, a Hall of Fame quarterback. Who was this player? Answer at the end here. Get to some quick news and notes. The Rams Director of Rehabilitation and Assistant Athletic Trainer, Byron Cunningham was named the Assistant Athletic Trainer of the Year. Well, that's a mouthful, but hey, is the name Byron trending for the Rams? Byron Young had a great rookie season. Byron Cunningham wins this award, and the Rams drafting Byron Murphy 19th overall in the NFL draft. That's how I see it anyways. That's what I'm hoping for. Potentially a lot of Byrons in the Rams clubhouse this upcoming season. Someone suggested that there was more than one team interested in Sam Howell when the Seahawks traded for him, and one of those teams was perhaps the Rams. I'm not sure how much truth there is to this, but hey, I like Sam Howell. I think he'd be a perfect backup for this system the Rams have. I don't know if he qualifies as a quarterback of the future, but he is really talented. Just got sacked a lot, partially due to a very poor offensive line and partially due to the fact that, yeah, he hangs onto the ball too long. But if this is true, the Seahawks and the Rams kind of agreed with me and my special assistant. We both think pretty highly of Sam Howell for a young quarterback. Kind of bummed to hear that Hassan Reddick has been traded to the Jets. Don't know if the Rams had any interest in him at all, but he was one of the remaining guys out there, not a free agent, but a guy that was obviously on the trading block. 
might have been a good fit for the Rams, might have helped solve this edge rusher dilemma that we apparently have. And Michael Penix apparently had a really impressive pro day. And what does that mean for the Rams? Well, if he elevates himself into the top half of the first round, and now I'm taking the approach that the Rams don't want to draft a quarterback, but if he elevates himself along with these other guys, well, we know Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May are all going to go early. Now they're saying J.J. McCarthy as well, and Michael Penix too. If all of these quarterbacks go early, it just pushes players. I think the Rams should be drafting down further in the first round. And that little eight-player bubble we talked about, one of those guys is definitely going to be available. Penix elevating his draft status is a good thing for the Rams. I'm going to review a couple of recent drafts, one of them on ESPN. They went Jared Verse, the edge rusher out of Florida State with our first round pick, number 19 overall, came back and grabbed a safety, Caleb Bullock out of USC, 52nd pick overall. I'm kind of lukewarm on that, actually. I don't think our secondary needs any help at this point. Maybe add a safety if you want to keep Quinton Lake at that star position and pair someone up with Cameron Curl, someone other than Russ Yeast, or you don't want to move Lake back to safety still think that's a little early, though, to address that position. There are some other needs. And they got to what I think is perhaps the biggest need, the 83rd pick overall, Rook Orohoro, the defensive tackle out of Clemson. And this is a guy Paul Wallia has been pounding the desk for. So in this draft, that is a selection. And then after that, some names we haven't heard for the Rams yet, and a couple of familiar names, Karen Amagadaji, offensive tackle out of Yale. I know I butchered that name. Jarvis Brownlee, the cornerback out of Louisville. Dylan Johnson, running back out of Washington. I like that pick. And the wide receiver out of Michigan, Cornelius Johnson. And this is another guy Paul Wallia has mocked to the Rams. 209th pick overall. They draft a tight end, Eric All out of Iowa. A lot of good tight ends coming out of that school. And then a defensive end out of Charlotte, Iabi Okianoma. And the last two picks... This one I don't get at all. Tory Taylor, a punter out of Iowa. And the last pick, Harrison Mavis, a kicker out of Missouri. So some good picks here. I like Verse. I like Orhohoro. And I like the kicker with the last pick. Cornelius Johnson, we've talked a little bit about him. Two of the top five picks, defensive backs, though. Not feeling that right now. Not with the additions the Rams have made. And Charles Davis, NFL.com. His draft, three quarterbacks go first, followed by three wide receivers, and then Joe Alt, the offensive tackle, two edge rushers, Dallas Turner and Latou. So still some guys on the board that the Rams might be interested in. Who goes next? Brock Bowers and J.J. McCarthy, two guys I don't think the Rams will be interested in. And then the cornerback, Quinion Mitchell, and the offensive lineman, Fuaga. Next off the board is Fashanu, another offensive lineman, and Cooper DeJean, a defensive back. Surprise Charles has him going before Terry on Arnold, but there you have it. And then next off the board, Michael Penix, the quarterback. So the Rams can choose between Jared Verse, Terry on Arnold, and Byron Murphy, and Charles selects Bo Nix for the Rams. Don't see it. Don't see that at all. And the reason I don't see it is. The Rams' goal this year is a Super Bowl championship. I said it. That's what it is. This team is poised to make a run at the Super Bowl. And I ask you, is Bo Nix going to help us get there? Hey, he could be the quarterback of the future. Michael Penix could be the quarterback of the future. Any one of these guys could be the quarterback of the future. Are any one of them going to help us win a Super Bowl this year? And if they are not, I'm not interested. Well, what are we, two plus weeks into free agency? Rams have made some moves. And I think it'd be a good time to reassess where we are as far as the Rams roster. Where are the obvious areas of concern? I'm not going to go through the whole depth chart. I'm not even going to go through my old shopping list. I will revisit that another day. Let's just real quickly go through this roster from this perspective. What do we need to do to win a Super Bowl? Where are the chinks in our armor? 
What positions do the Rams have some work left to do? Let's get into it. Quarterback, Matthew Stafford, Jimmy G, and Stetson Bennett, and Dresser Wynn. I think the Rams are done here. I don't think they're going to draft a quarterback. I don't think they need to. I'd be very surprised if they did. Not going to add anybody to this room. Stetson Bennett needs to get ready to be the backup quarterback for the first two games of the season, or maybe it'd have to be Dresser Win, and then we turn those duties over to Jimmy G. I know some folks saying the Rams are going to draft their quarterback of the future, and you know, if they ended up doing that, someone like Bo Nix, as I mentioned earlier in this episode, I could live with that, but I don't think Bo Nix is going to help us win a Super Bowl this year, and that should be our goal. Running back Kyron, Ronnie, and Zach, and that's about it. I think we'll add a running back late in the draft, but I'm okay with this room. Probably need to add a fourth guy, whether it's a street free agent, a veteran coming in after the June 1st cuts, or a fifth, sixth round draft pick. Not too concerned about the running back position. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Wide receiver, we got Cooper Cobb, Puka Nakua, and Demarcus Robinson leading the way, backed up by Tutu Atwell and Ben Skowronik. Xavier Smith is on a futures contract. Tyler Johnson, I've seen him listed as a restricted free agent, unrestricted free agent. Thought they might bring him back. Not sure what's going on with him. He fits the Rams profile, 6'1", 206 pounds. But this is what I'm going to say about the wide receiver group. I'd be completely 100% behind the Rams going wide receiver early in the draft. How early? I'm not sure. But our wide receivers take a beating, especially Cooper Cup and Puka. Cooper Cup's not getting any younger. We could find a way to add a dynamic wide receiver early in the draft and still address some other needs that we're going to talk about here in a second. I'd be behind that 100%. Tight ends, feeling pretty good about this group. Colby Parkinson and Davis Allen will be the guys early in the season. We have two guys on future reserves contracts. Forrest Hall and Kalenic, Hunter Long, and Tyler Higby coming back from injuries. I don't think we're going to do anything here. Certainly not going to sign another tight end, and I'd be surprised if we drafted one as well. Maybe take a flyer on one we like late in the draft, I suppose, but not going to spend a lot of time talking tight ends from here on. Offensive line, I love our starting five. Alaric Jackson, Jonah Jackson, Steve Avila, Kevin Dotson, and Rob Havenstein. A little concerned about the depth. The only guys I think we can really count on are Noteboom and Warren McClendon. Still got A.J. Curry, Logan Bruss, Grant Miller, and Zach Thomas. Not sure what they bring. Sean McVay clearly sees something in Mike McAllister, the center, so maybe we're onto something there. I think we need to add some depth here, and I think we will. But our starting five is solid. Got a couple good backups. I'd like to add one more, though. Defensive line, Kobe Turner, Bobby Brown, Deshaun Johnson, Corey Durden, and Laurel Murchison. That reads a lot differently when you don't include a name like Aaron Donald, doesn't it? And that's why I keep on arguing for a defensive lineman early in the draft, and I think that's going to happen. How early? I don't know. There's some good ones we can get in the second or third round. I still like Byron Murphy. I don't know how many times I've said it. I'll say it one more time. He's my favorite for the 19th pick overall in the draft. But again, I'd be okay if we went edge, wide receiver, and maybe even cornerback. We'll get to that in a second. And maybe we add a veteran after June 1st or right before the draft. That's a pattern the Rams have followed for years, and that could happen again. On the edge, Byron Young, Michael Hoyt, O'Shawn Mathis, Nick Hampton, Zach Van Valkenburg, pretty young group. Can they get it done? Can they get it done? I don't know if they can get it done. Certainly hopeful. And I understand Rams Nation arguing very strongly for an edge rusher in the first round of the draft. Thought we might add one of the veterans. And I have a feeling the Rams tried. And maybe something's still in the works. Hassan Reddick, 
a big trade for Josh Allen? I don't know. Not sure we have the cash to pay him is the problem. But something's going to happen with regards to the edge. It's either going to be a veteran addition or a high draft pick for an edge rusher. If Jared Verse fell onto our lap or we were able to move up for Dallas Turner, Latou would be a great option too. Something's going to happen there. Just torn between defensive tackle, edge, and wide receiver at this point. Now, secondary, a couple of weeks ago, I would have felt very strongly that the Rams are going to draft a cornerback or two and a safety perhaps. But look what we've done over the last couple of weeks. We've added Darius Williams and Tredavious White and safety Cameron Curl, three outstanding players. Now, a lot of people are concerned about the health of Tredavious White, as am I. But before we added him, I would have been okay with Darius Williams, Kobe Durant, Quentin Lake, Darion Kendrick. I don't think that group was that bad. And then you go draft a cornerback in the second round, third round, really deep cornerback draft, and we would have been okay. So Tredavious White is kind of like icing on the cake. Let's see if he can come in and get it done. If he can, this is an elite secondary. If for some reason he can't, we're not going to be in horrible shape. Be a bummer that we allotted $8 million a year for his acquisition, but I still think we'd be okay at the cornerback position. Rams kind of rolling the dice on this. Hey, let's bring him in. Maybe we have an elite secondary. If not, kind of a bummer, but our secondary will be okay. Do they draft a cornerback? Absolutely. At some point, do they draft a safety? Probably as well. I suspect it will not be an early selection at either position, but I could be wrong. So you got Darius Williams, Tredavious White, Kobe Durant, Darion Kendrick, Trey Tomlinson, Sean Jolly, Cameron McCutcheon, Quinton Lake, Cameron Curl, Russ Yeast, Jason Taylor II, and Tanner Engel. Pretty good group. That's all I'm going to say about that. Well, just like the Rams, I almost forgot about linebacker. <laughs> we have a great one in Ernest Jones. Christian Roseboom plays alongside him in some configurations. And we got Jake Hummel and Taku Kasi. And that's about it. Man, I would just love for the Rams to add a second really dynamic athletic linebacker. And I think they will this year. There are some really good ones. Paul Walia has highlighted a few that would be available on day three. Need to bring in someone a little bit more athletic. Let's get that linebacker group playing sideline to sideline, blitzing, covering tight ends, doing it all. Kind of miss that. Haven't had that from the Rams. You know, a little bit with Ernest Jones and Bobby Wagner playing next to each other for one season. But other than that, our linebacker group has always just been okay. Now, don't get me wrong. Ernest Jones is great, but over the last 15, 20 years, has not been a group to get excited about. In special teams, we need to address kick returner. Maybe someone in the draft hopefully can get that done for us. Not sure if there's anyone on our roster that's going to fit in nicely with this new kickoff rule. Maybe Tutu Atwell, possibly. And then we need a kicker. Still need a kicker. <laughs> Got to figure that out. A lot of folks saying don't draft a kicker, including Paul Walia, and I get it. Not totally disagreeing, but I'd feel much better if we drafted a kicker. But then again, the problem is yeah, you draft a kicker in the sixth or seventh round, and that's never a sure thing either. I would have preferred they found a veteran, brought in a veteran to get the job done, a known quantity. So we're going to be sitting on the edge of our seats until the first preseason game when we have a new kicker out there that can actually hit it through the uprights from 45 yards out on a regular basis. That remains to be seen. Still concerned about that. That's my quick review of the LA Rams roster. Late March, as we head into April, summarizing what work is left for the Rams front office. And the answer to that trivia question, the quarterback that the Rams signed in 1977 played with them for one year War number 12, since it is episode 412, that's why we're highlighting this guy, this Hall of Fame quarterback, Joe Namath. That's it. 
that's going to do it for this episode. Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.